Hello, here we are again, getting closer to Christmas. And uh, there are just three three verses that uh, come to my attention. They're, they're verses where the word Christian is actually used. There aren't many places where the word Christian as such is uh, is used. And these three references help us to see what it means to be a Christian. The first one comes in Acts uh, chapter 26 uh, and uh, in verse 28. And the Apostle Paul has been giving his uh, testimony and uh, defence before King Agrippa. And uh, as Paul comes to the end of his uh, testimony and his defence uh, King Agrippa is prompted to say this do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian that's interesting isn't it as he listened to Paul's testimony he was also being challenged in his own heart concerning his own need and uh, uh, he realised that there was a decision that needed to be made whether he was going to respond uh, to what he was hearing and the Christian message and to Jesus Christ or whether he was going to postpone his response or even reject the challenge that came to him and it does remind us that there is that decision to be made that commitment to the Lord Jesus when we hear the gospel what he's done for us and what he's waiting to do for us and in Acts chapter 11 and again in verse 26 we have these words for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul, that is Paul, met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. That's where the name Christian came from, Antioch. And it would seem as though it's a word given by the onlookers uh, they saw these Christians enthusiastically going along to these meetings where Paul and Barnabas were speaking and speaking about the Christian faith uh, they saw them they saw their how their fellowship they saw how they enjoyed one another's company and they enjoyed and how much they appreciated the scriptures being explained to them. And they said, oh, well, these folks are Christians. They're following Christ. And it was because of their behavior going along to the meetings and the fellowship. And that's another reminder, isn't it, that a Christian not only makes a decision, but he is a disciple, a learner, a follower of the Lord Jesus, along with others. We're not Christians on our own. We don't live in isolation. There are other Christians with which we can have fellowship and uh, encourage one another and enjoy one another's fellowship. And so, not only the decision, but there's this call to discipleship and then the last uh, verse that I noticed is uh, from 1 Peter chapter 4 and in verse 16 and uh, Peter says if you suffer as a Christian do not be ashamed but praise God that you bear that name.
if you suffer as a Christian, if you're teased uh, because people know you're a Christian, well, don't be anxious, don't be worried, don't be ashamed. In fact, in that way, we can glorify our God and we can bring Jesus closer to other people. And I uh, suppose if we are making uh, the presence of Christ felt from time to time by our lives and by our witness, then people are going to react and some people are going to do it uh, rather critically. But we, all, we always remember that Jesus himself was criticised and uh, he, all the way through his life there were people who would find fault with him when there was no fault to find really and if only they would responded to him then he, they would have received his blessing. So there's this sense of devotion to Christ, a commitment to Christ. I suppose one could compare it with marriage, where there's a genuine and sincere marriage, then two people are committing themselves to one another. They don't necessarily know what the, the future holds, but they know that they go together into the future, uh, there to support and to encourage and to help one another. And so with us, we turn to Christ, we're following Christ, we're learning from Christ, we're sharing Christ as we have opportunity and going along day by day in our Christian lives. And uh, at this time of the year when people are singing carols, we hope that and pray that people will not only know the carols, but also will know the Saviour of whom Christmas speaks. No room on this earth for the dear Son of God. Nowhere to lay his head. Only a cross did they give our Lord. Only a borrowed tomb. Today, this season of the year, he's seeking a place in our hearts where we still say to him, no room. Well, as Christians, we've told him, Lord, Come in, at plenty of room, and come in to be our Saviour and our friend and our Lord, and help us to follow you and to learn from you. So, the Lord bless you at this time of the year, and let us continue to rejoice in the one who loved us and gave himself for us, and who is with us day by day, our Saviour and our friend. Just a brief prayer. We thank you for Christmas, Heavenly Father, and we're reminded that it was the birthday of your Son, the gift of your love, the one who came willingly, and his name was Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your love. Bless us, we pray, and make us a blessing in these needy days. For your glory we ask it. Amen. OK, well, God willing, be with you next week. Bye-bye. God bless.